in for that, but yeah, so Hydra had an extra uh, pass, basically, so uh, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, he's still wearing it. I actually didn't realize that he was wearing it, but I that's... Know, the camera's off. Oh, okay. oh my god, we'll yeah. We'll touch on that later. We are in the game, guys, and... Uh, I bet you can just pile in right there. I mean, what's up? And yeah, well, the, the game has begun. So, in the top hand side of the map, what, 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 I'm really bad with map names. On Dust Towers. That's one o'clock. Yeah, one o'clock. Twelve, thir yeah, one, one. One, let's go. Okay, one. Okay. You do map introductions. <laughs> okay, spawning at the one o'clock position of Dust Towers, <laughs> we have the purple Protoss representing Flipside Tactics. It is Puck. And in the seven o'clock position, six forty, I would say max. Six six forty. Okay, yeah. six forty. Representing property, yeah. property yeah. esports. Yeah. It's the red zerg player, Zanster. Wow, not not a lot of energy there. Not a lot. Of, I I felt like you gave Puck a little bit more love than than, I mean, than you gave on to here. It's NA, like. Oh, you're oh you're cheering for NA. Yeah, like you got Puck and no regret, like. Like. Dream come true. Yeah, pretty much. So. The pylon is purple. Why is the pylon? Is that a, is it's that a team skin? colors. Oh, team colors. Cool. No, no, no. I like it. I like it. I like it. I, I like purple. So. This is this is halfway up the. Yeah, and this is pretty much um, standard cookie cutter builds for both of them. Mm -hmm. They're going uh, into a nexus first gateway, two gases. Could see a second gateway for a death pressure on the side of Puck, and on the side of Anton Dalstrom, also known as Sandster, he's chosen to go for a three hatch before pool. Dropping the pool and the gas um, shortly thereafter. So Puck is going to be scouting. And what is he going to find here? Well, okay, no, it's three hatch. For sure, for sure. Scouts the gas as well. It's important to scout the gases uh, off a Zerg. That's one of the main things that you want to be looking for as a Protoss player. Simply because seeing the gas will allow you or, or you know, not allow you to, for example, use stalkers, right? Like. Stalker pressure against gasless play is incredibly strong because stalkers can not be caught by anything that Sir has until we get link speed. So if the speed is too delayed, he could he could have chosen to make stalkers instead of adepts potentially. Mm -hmm. um, not a lot of players do that, but it's it's definitely an option. So having having the gas negates that uh, possibility, and most Sirks will take the gas pretty early on. I, I do sometimes delay the gas if there is no pro scout, however. Mm -hmm. So we do see that second uh, gateway and two adepts in production for Puck. So we're gonna see some harassment here. Anton Dahlstrom is going to run his Overlord inside, but a little bit unnecessary because he should know it's two gate adepts just based off of the fact that uh, the second gateway and the cyber core are in the front. Like, mm -hmm. um, if he had been paying attention, he may have noticed that uh, the cyber core and the gateway at the front were in production at the same time. Mm -hmm. yeah, and exactly. that means that you, know, you have another gateway because you couldn't have started the yeah. cyber core without another gateway. So... Just but, uh, gathering information regardless. Puck's going to catch a couple of these circlings for free. Mm -hmm. And it's going to force a lot of lanes out. Yeah, and behind us he's being extremely greedy, taking a third. Notice that he doesn't move the Adepts uh, while, while, while using the Shade, and that's a really cool detail uh, here from Puck. Because, you know, they're not going to move any faster no, if they're, they're running. Not. So th they might as well stay in a position where they can potentially catch more links on the way and, and stuff like that. Just little little details here and there. So there Anton is going to be chasing these Adepts with his Zerglings, and the Adepts are going to have to make a choice. They choose not to uh, go into their Shade mode, mm -hmm. and uh, still poking to, to try and find some damage. Now the Links have a decision to make themselves. One thing that I really like to do against this sort of pressure is evacuate my third completely, mm -hmm. because then this happens, right? Like, right now, I don't like the position for Sandster, simply because uh, he's already taking a lot of damage. Now oh, he'll finally the links catch can. those Adepts, so, th so that's great. But if we look at the drone count right now, He's actually 35 drones to 43 probes. Yeah. So you want to shut down the the adepts uh, a little bit more comfortably than he did. And I don't know that he has an evil chamber. And without an nope. evil chamber, no, he doesn't. So these links are going to be pretty worthless for the most part. So so the adepts did a lot of indirect damage here, Taylor. What's 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 your take on this? What do you what do you think? Yeah, like well, you have to make you have to make links against Look adepts. at this though. I mean, he's getting stuff done, but the pylons are just overcharging. I mean, he does surround one. But he's not gonna be able to go. Those pylons are powerful. Man. Oh yeah, I mean, they don't count kills. I wow. guess. Wow, it's the secret, secret pylons. Yeah, but if we look at the units lost, we can see the aftermath is is more resources lost for Sandster, despite him catching the adepts. Um, 
And, and, and you know, it's not only the resources lost, but, but also the fact that he was... He wasn't drowning in between, right? Yeah. And, and Anton, I like, I like this. I like this though. He basically said, "Okay, you know what? I made so many circlings early on, and 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 you know, if if, if he tries to drone up, he's always gonna be behind in the economy. So he's just game. gonna so, commit. Yeah. Instead, he's just gonna commit, Taylor. I, I like this decision just based off of the position that Sansa was put in. Oh, oh no, I'm not paying attention. Out. Huge, Taylor. Take it out. Take play back. And the lanes come in. Pile, surrounding pylons, pylon overcharge going all of them, but they get taken out. The mothership core is still alive, but there's nothing but sentries on the ramp. But Ravager is going to break the force field with Ravager shot after he gets on cooldown. But if he takes out that pylon, that's actually going to uh, disable gateway. And all there is is just a war prism, but he could use a war prism to power up the other gateway. For sure, for but sure. But the Ravager is destroying the force fields. Like, oh the links are just going to get in. This force field as well by, by Puck is, is going to make it so that a few links get in. But nice photon over or pylon overcharge. Wow, nice pylon overcharge. Very, very well done by Puck. And those pylons are actually putting up quite a fight. Yeah, they really are. Yeah. But is it enough? I mean, Sansar is so far behind in economy that he needs to, to, to basically Pretty much kill, kill Puck. Yeah, yeah. He, he needs to kill Puck with this. And Mortal, and Mortal comes out. With War Prism Micro. Oh. Oh he, oh, he missed the Warpers on Micro, yeah. and that's going to be GG for Puck. Sandster with a one-game lead, a very unexpected win, and playstyle by Anton Dahlstrom, who has in the past generally been known for, for macro. being a, a macro yeah, player. A macro yeah, player. a very standard macro player, doesn't like taking risks and whatnot, doesn't like... Um... I think Puck just got caught out, pretty much. Like, the, oh, yeah. the league's like, fully around this century, like, and I was like... I, I, if, was I was, if I was playing against Sandster, I'd try to just get advantages everywhere based yeah. on the fact that I would know like he's a very macro heavy player a very uh, macro oriented player that yeah. you know like once like you, that's you have the sentries zone. and you have the pylons and that's yeah. all you need to defend but if the sentries get caught out and the ravagers come then all you have for DPS is the pylons and the immortal was like late and you know the war prism like he didn't pick up the immortal at all like so I guess he kind of gave up at the end right there yeah for sure but, so uh, yeah. a very quick game one going um, the way of Sansa yeah. here. And most people in the chat were saying bet on Puck, bet on Puck. So yeah, I was, on, I was like? betting on Puck because I've seen his play on that map and it's really solid. Like, I think uh, he was going to go for that mass gateway, like charge lap timing. Mm -hmm. He may um, have. He may, he may have been playing the sentries, too. I mean, yeah. he, he did have the very early uh, Twilight Council. Yeah, and so he got that War Prism, which is yeah. always flexible. Maybe, maybe he changed his plan, uh, but yeah. Anton Dahlstrom is going to take a one game lead here, so... Hashtag. I was really rooting for... I thought Puck had that map, like, to be honest. I haven't really seen Zancer play, though. So, but just knowing from Hots, like, total macro player. Like, he'd rather just overwhelm his opponent eventually, but I think he, he, he might have known change, that um... Puck was, like, that person who likes to go for those really strong pushes. Like, those really strong, like, uh, like charge lot, the charge lot uh, push that he does against you. Or the uh, he likes his war prism harass, likes getting the immortals out and just force fielding off uh, base and killing it for free. Pretty much doing those strong pushes and retreating with the mothership core. But uh, good good job from Sanster. Good job from Sanster. <laughs> Great analysis, Taylor. We got this. <laughs> Ruins of Ceres is going to be the second map, and we're already loading into it. So get ready, everyone. This is going to be a four-player map with a beautiful tile set. This is my favorite type of tile set in maps. It's really? Jungly type. Yeah. I don't. I don't like them. No. Um, I think I like the like standard. What's the standard? Like just gra thing? like just the standard green grass or something like Yansu back then or uh. Yansu standard? You mean the isn't Yansu the one that had like snow and and? Yeah, but I just don't like map? the jungle. I I don't know why. I don't like jungles and I don't like the desert maps. So you like the standard snow and grass, <laughs> sunshine. <laughs> like sunshine one or the other. Flames, like type. okay. Oh no! That's a that's a fuck uh, missing missing up with his probes there a little bit, so perhaps the pressure is getting to him. Maybe it is. He is playing the Swedish champion Sandster. Two times in a row, I believe he wore he won a uh, esport SM. Did he? Um, I believe so. At least one time. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was two. I think he won the last one, right? Yeah. These uh, spawn locations are. I think they're in the Zerg's favor. Would you agree on that? Like, I think if it's close by air, then the war prism comes in, and it's like you can pick off your opponent pretty easily. Mm -hmm. But oh yeah, we didn't do introductions. Oh, horrible. why don't you do them, Taylor? I don't know why. Okay, so spawning in the left positions of Runaceres, we have What's representing. What, uh, what number in the clock would this be? 
the the eight? Eight. Okay. Eight. We have flip side tactics, puck. <laughs> and in the four o'clock position. With a little bit more hype this time. Last time you understood. Representing Property Esports, we have the Red Zerg player, Zanster. Zanster. Sanster and Puck. What a matchup. And Puck is going to be scouting Sanster right away. This uh, this this scouting probe is a tell in itself because, you know, Anton should be able to to know, okay, with a probe early, with, with, a, with a probe scout this early, he should he should know the position of his yeah. opponent. Uh, he's still being cautious and still sending the Overlord over to the top left-hand side uh, regardless. But, but yeah, he should have a, a, a good idea of where Puck is right now. So we'll see if that impacts his build in, in any way. I wonder if he's going to go for that charge lat push. It's a really good map for it because it's like right there. It's close positions. Mm, but he's keeping does that. It matter? Does it matter that it's close position? I, I, I guess it does a little bit, but mm. I think when he does that, he may proxy a gateway. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's why I was, the pro was like hanging around the third. And I was like, or the uh, fourth base. And I was yeah, like, yeah, maybe what I'm saying he's is like, if he proxies a gateway, there's, I mean, it doesn't matter. The, the, this, the oh. distance doesn't matter as, as much. Well, here we come a proxy. Or it could be scouting. What do you think? Proxy or scouting probe? Not sure. And uh, mm. I don't like this base by Anton. No, I don't either. Unless he's planning to be the aggressor one more time, this is a. Uh, of course, you you generally don't want to expand to towards your opponent unless you want to be in an aggressive stance. Oh, so, Puck's gonna scout it. Yeah, Puck is gonna see this right away, and and yeah, what I'm what I'm trying to get at is is if you if you expand towards your opponent, then that means that. If you're planning to play a macro game, you will be more susceptible to take damage because the reinforcements of your opponent will get there quicker, especially if, 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 if this was like a, a two adept opener or something like that again. <laughs> Having said that, Puck did scout Sandster and knows that there wasn't a three hatch before pool once again. So um, we'll see We'll see what he decides to do. He's still opened with two adepts and uh, he is moving across the map with them. Well, that is the magic number, right? Because you two shot a drone. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Sure thing. I mean, he'll probably scout and react to what he sees, like the tech. Like, there's one Evo chamber going down, and what does that say for the Zerg player? Just one Evo. Like, maybe Overlord drops? Oh, and, and this is the problem with going for the two adept pressure when your opponent didn't go for three hatches for pull. Their speed is going to be much faster. However, the adepts are still very powerful, and they get inside the Zerg's main. Can they find any kills? Um, not like this, I would say. One adept is going to die for free. And the links are gonna get here to to kill the second one off, by the looks of it. Does so no drones will be lost by, by the. Let's see. Let's see what he scouted. Um, he he does. does know that that there is an evil chamber in play. So you think in the back of his mind he'll think, overload drops are a possibility. Of course, yeah, that is definitely a possibility and, and something that that sensor could take advantage of. I mean, he has a, an overload in position. It's it's a it's a small investment. If it just kills a couple probes, it's better than nothing. Otherwise, these links are kind of just sitting around, so you might as well give it a shot. It's a cat's move. It's a cat's... I wouldn't say it's a cat's move. I mean, come on. Like, making overload drop because you you're have a genius, chamber. Right? Well, I am a genius, <laughs> but that's, like, it doesn't take a genius. Yeah, like, this could be a, a Taylor booth. It's very basic, you know? I don't think it is. I think it's pretty strong, but... Uh, quick I mean, light. it can be strong, yeah. but it's, it's very basic, you know? Lair, Rotorn, and plus one melee, so it looks like he's going for... What, Nidus? I don't think a Nidus, right? It could very well be a Nidus. That's Nidus a, is very really powerful. Surprising. Um, either way, Puck is very is is is, is pushing to be very aggressive, and Sanster has not overthrown. So, if Puck goes for an Olin, it looks like he might be. This is going to be pretty good for Sanster because he does have three base. He actually has three less workers than Puck, but that is not to say that Puck is not committed to this because he does not have a fourth uh, third base. Mm. So if this attack gets stopped by Sanser, and I don't see how it wouldn't. Oh, oh but nice big catch crap. on the links. Uh, necessary for still there uh, towards the end. The uh, adepts are gonna die regardless. But I mean, all in all, that was really nice for Puck, and it's what he needs. This, mm -hmm. He's completely all in, right? He doesn't have a third base. If if this fails, he's out of the tournament, actually. So one of the North American hopes here, with his life on the line on a on a pretty old school immortal sentry old Lin with. Uh, oh, but what a stuff. nice surround. He's gonna try to envelop the uh, Protoss Tommy with the Zerglings. Oh, but nice I don't think there's Puck. there's just not enough here. Oh, that's that's just a really unorganized movement by Sandster there. He had so many more units that could have been doing damage while the rest of his units yep. were, were being taken down, and, and he just didn't do it. And and the sad thing for for Anton Dalstrom here is. 
he actually had all the tools that he needed to stop this. Again, if we look at, at the units tab, we see that uh, Puck is five workers ahead, which mm -hmm. means Sandster did not over drone by any means. Yeah. So he should have had enough to stop this, and I think that he did, had he attacked with everything uh, at the same time. The depths are gonna block the ramp. Oh. Nah. That would have been a cool, cool move, but yeah, drones are being pulled and... And, and they, they have to be, but I, I think this is a little bit too much damage that Sansor is going to take, and I think that Puck is going to even the series here and keep the North American dream alive. Do you really just clap? Yeah. The hype. Well, is he? Well, I mean, even if the Puck loses his powerful. army, though, like, the drone count, like, well, he lost thank you. No, yeah, a lot of work. Kill the hype. Yeah. <laughs> So is Puck gonna save the Immortals? It looks like he will not save one of them. And uh, Hydra's a, a very unusual choice by uh, Anton Dahlstrom, who in the meanwhile seems to have done some probe damage, uh, maybe by a link drop or something along those lines. Regardless, if we look at the units tab once again, Puck nearly doubling the the workers that, that Sansar has. And, and he took down the third, so yeah. there's not that to worry about uh, anymore. If, if he hadn't taken the third, then maybe Puck would be looking to take a third right now. But as it is, Puck has to know that as long as he produces units non-stop, Sandster should not be able to keep up with his production. Exactly. And I love that Puck is, is adding a Disruptor here because he has seen Hydras. And Disruptors are going to be strong against Hydras, but more than that, they're going to be very strong against Lurkers, which are units that, you know, can't micro and they out can stall of out the game. Shot. Yeah. So this is a, a really, really nice by by Puck to consider going for the Disruptor. He basically said, "Okay, I've done enough damage um, with my with my with my attack. I killed yeah. enough workers. So just going to do a follow up. Yeah, just going into a follow up very quickly, very well thought out. It wasn't like he was over committing. He was like, "Oh crap, Hydras. Mm -hmm. You know what? In case he attack, he stops his attack. I'm gonna have that Disruptor ready for the next one. So I really like the what's what's the word." Taylor follow-up isn't it yeah yeah sure mm -hmm. follow-up but like um contingency like just in case it, it was it was just an, a nice uh thought process by Puck right like oh yeah he, like, well I'm sure he's like, done this on ladders tons of times like it was really thought out it's really uh it was executed pretty like perfectly mm -hmm. and yeah there goes the disruptor and almost almost takes out both of those queens and drones are being pulled again and that's GG and Puck will take game number two evening out the series so what's your take on this? What's it? I didn't like the third from Zanster. I think... Do uh, you think that's what killed him? I mean, like you said, he did have all the tools, and he just didn't execute it perfectly right there. Okay. So let me check but the really good push from Puck. <laughs> and what's the third map? Okay, so just one second. You guys, if you ever like, you know, like, if you're ever like, oh, like, I wish I was a pro. <laughs> nah, man. Players are difficult, man. Um, but yeah, it seems like Euthermal's here now, so that's awesome. So we will have a, a Euthermal versus Solar match right after this. So go place your bets on esportgaming.com slash root. It takes a couple of minutes to make an account. If you think that Solar is going to win, you could... It's time to make some uh, solid, easy money. Taylor here does think that uh, my man Euthermal has a solid chance, though. I mean, Euthermal has been playing like a god. I know Solar is a god, but, I mean, Terran Pride. I know he's been having difficulties with the matchup. More like Kappa Pride. Wow. I mean, he's a pretty good-looking dude. Sure. He's, like, he's attractive. There's a lot of attractive players. Like, you're, you're pretty handsome, Cass. Like, Thank you. I think so, too. Me I mean, you don't mind. try to, like suplex me or something like that mm -hmm. 
but have I ever suplexed you? No, because I defend it. I sprawl. Oh yeah. 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 Well, you did. You did try it. Yeah. Uh, so Taylor challenged uh, Jim Rising <laughs> to a wrestling match yesterday. <laughs> Jim Rising's English is not the best, so we went out to eat some pho, the Vietnamese soup thing, and uh, Taylor was like. Jim, Jim said something silly. I don't remember what it was. And Taylor was like, you want to wrestle me, Jim? And Jim was like, sure. If you, uh, maybe you're faster. But uh, if I catch you with one punch, I think I win. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty great. So I'm, I'm waiting for that wrestling match with uh, apparently punches involved and... <laughs> And allowed. We are now in game three, the deciding match to see which one of these two amazing players will be moving on to the round of eight of the World War Three Invitational. And in the top and uh, one o'clock, actually, um, of the map, uh, orbital shipyard. Orbital shipyard. It is the purple Protoss from Flipside Tactics. Bitch, puck, puck. Go ahead. Or you want, yeah. And in the 7 o'clock, 7, yeah. 7 yeah. 10 or so, uh, of the same map, Orbital it is, Ship. Orbital <laughs> ship. <laughs> it is going to be the Red Zerg playing for Team Property, Sunster. What a player. Do you try to act smart when you say 7 10 and stuff? Like, like to be like super like precise? No, and, it's just like a joke. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I got you? I got it. No, no, I thought you actually knew like I thought you actually knew like where the seven ten was. Like the angle. Yeah. I mean it's probably like seven ten, seven fifteen. Yeah, and seven thirteen. You go by tens though. There. Like if you went by fifteen, it'd be like fifteen, thirty, forty five, and then eight. Like What are you even talking about, Taylor? Why why are you <laughs> why are you talking about these things, man? You're just a genius. I'm just trying to get in your head. Yeah, well it's very difficult to get in my head. <laughs> so we see a three hatch before pull by uh, by uh Sandstar once again. And Puck with a very standard uh, pylon or, or probe scout once again. So, one thing that I didn't like from Puck last game is that he scouted with the probe, and then he didn't really seem to change his build mm -mm. order regardless. Like, he still went for the adept pressure. So, my question is, if you're unwilling to change your opener, if what you see is not going to be, you know, what you want to see mm -hmm. for the two upgrade, two, two adept pressure, then why scout at all? I think he's just looking for, like, an early pull or something that, mm, like... For sure, for sure. And he's like, I see the three hatch, sigh of relief, I know that nothing cheeky is coming my way, and I can just keep doing my build and just pretty much just go on auto... Autopilot. Autopilot, yeah. yeah. So we see uh, the second <clears throat> gateway, and we expect another uh, two adept opener from Puck here. Probably a very similar opener as, as the previous two game or, or as the as the as the first game where he will most likely take a third. On this particular map, it's not too difficult to take mm -hmm. a third. So, I, I think that's most likely what we're gonna see out of Paka, a very greedy third, and maybe we'll see the infamous charge lot charge lot all in. I mean, it's really hard to take a fourth though on this map, like it, unless you have like that creep spread all the way past that point. So I'll, I wonder if Zancer is gonna try to do a three base pressure like i don't uh, think it's that hard to take a fourth right like um you just break the rocks and take the one yeah but then the, you have two sides right. into your third like sentries you know force uh, fields are good yeah but but i mean to to get in that position they would have to like kill your fourth first that is if true yeah, if they're killing your fourth it's you know you're fine like, oh and or, or the depths are going to catch the lings so i yeah, wonder if answer is going to make 10 more lings again uh probably i mean it seems like it seems <laughs> like a mirror of the first game so far and uh, eight in production. So I like it a little bit better this time. It's less of an overcommitment. So perhaps mm -hmm. Anton is saying, okay, I made too many links last time. Maybe I was forced or I forced myself into, no, into an all in. I don't want to do the same thing again. The adepts are just chilling outside and will they teleport and they do. Wow. Lings are not going to get the full wrap around. And yeah, here it goes. Are there drones at the third? I think there's a couple, but I think he saw he's forcing Lings out and he's just going to get out. I think Puck. Yes, Pete's almost done too. So Sansar could stand to to catch this adept, and and, and Puck should see a, a trend here in in the speed timing of Sansar, or, or or you know like yeah, just like before. Not just that, but like it's like he scouted the gases, mm -hmm. so he really has no reason for the adepts to still yeah. be here. Um, like as a Protoss player uh, playing at a at a very high level, he he should be able to to tell 
Okay, like this is when you drop your gas. This is when, you know, you have speed. I should probably get out by then. Yeah, but he's still getting really good information. He scouts the Roach Warren and, and the 34th gas. And that's another thing. That that could be the main purpose of, of his adept. Yeah. If that's all he cares about, if it's the information, then what great. A genius. Good for him. Huh? What a genius. What a genius? Yeah. What's what's with you and genius today? I don't know. Like, all these all these pro players and everything like that, like, mm -hmm. just trying to get in their heads. It's, they're all geniuses. Like, like look at this. Like, Xancer obviously kept the Overlord there just to see how many sentries would poke at it. <laughs> but uh, Lings are actually not, they're gonna get the... <laughs> Did you like mean to like straight face me there? Yeah, of course. Okay. I mean, I'm I think really this is- really good at making people feel awful. I, I know, yeah. thanks. Um, but it looks like it's not gonna be the charge. It's gonna be a blink instead, which oh, wow. I was, I thought it was gonna be the charge for sure. I thought it was gonna be the charge because I, I haven't stopped that build from Puck yet. So good. Like, uh, we, we've played a, a bunch of games on the NL ladder, and, and every time he's done that build, like, two or three times, I, I, I've just died. But, uh, doesn't seem to, he doesn't seem to, uh, to want to do it here. And Anton Dahlstrom going for the Lurker, so maybe a little bit more information as to what his plan may have been for the second game had he not gotten all in. And uh, we'll see if, if, if he follows up with Aspire, which is a... Uh, common thing to see in the European ladder right now as, as I understand it is uh, a lot of players will drop the Lurker then and the Spire pretty close by so so that it's hard for the Protoss to, to tell. Of course the Lurkers will most likely be forcing out units like the um, Disruptor mm -hmm. which we see Puck right now is making the no longer called Colossus then but Robotics Bay because it now has two uses and uh, yeah I mean w when you're producing Disruptors that's where your gas is going you you know that the Protoss has the ability to make Disruptors oh, wow. because they nice invest in the Robo nothing that comes out of the robo can really shoot air so muta is a, is a very common and, and uh, good follow-up to to lurkers in most cases you know provided that they react like like you expect them yeah control the ground control the air oh now this is really scary for anton because the adepts are really powerful against all the units oh that my he gosh has. Those, those, or, all of those are, are light units and yeah reposition get a bigger arc is what he needs to do he needs to get those units down the ramp uh, Puck with another force field, but oh, oh misses it a little bit. No, do not engage, Anton. You want to wait. So Anton needs to wait here until all his army can join together if Puck ever allows for that, but he keeps force fielding. So he's going to cancel the macro hatch, and uh, that's definitely the right call. He needs to keep delaying the attack until mm. he can actually attack with the, with the units up the ramp. This is not looking good for the Swedish player, and uh, he's going to have to pull drones once again. Yeah, he's just going to um, keep force fielding that ramp. There's, there's no way those units are going to get down that ramp. No he, way, Jose, unless he made like a... A, an, an a Ravager. No, an Overlord or a Ravager, but I don't think he has uh, the ability to do that. So it seems like Anton might just have to forfeit his third. He has begun to uh, mine his fourth, however, so that is his new third. And it's maybe something that he should have thought of doing before, but uh, he didn't. And Lurkers are going to burrow, and uh, Puck needs to be really careful. Oh, there is an Observer in, in place, though, so that's going to allow him to pick up one Lurker, and now finally gets rid oh, of the Workers. And, and that's going to that's gonna put an end to uh, to Puck's aggression here, who stopped Force Field in the, the ramp, by the way. He Has could he... snipe the fourth, though, and just Force Field the ramp with the sentries. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He could have Force Field the ramp. Now he needs, like, two or three Force Fields mm -hmm. instead, but yeah, it looks like Anton is, is in a lot of trouble here, and people were saying that NA sucked in chat. What happened? They don't believe like I do. They don't believe like Taylor does. I mean, you're you're more in touch with the NA scene, yeah. EJK. Um, <laughs> NA and KR, I don't really pay attention to the EU scene. Oh, damn. I know. The, the blows. <laughs> Why don't you pay attention to the EU scene? Uh, I don't know. Like, I pay attention to Euthermal mm -hmm. because he's a Terran god. Right. And the Muslim because he's also, like, I don't know. Just, I think it's my time. It's like, I'm either up really, really late and then I would watch KR players. Uh-huh. Or I get up when I normally do and I watch NA players. Mm-hmm. So lurkers are, are the type of unit that will allow Anton Dahlstrom here to stick in the, in the around in the game for a little bit longer. And I love this link counter attack because those lurkers are gonna be hard to, to break regardless. Let's see if he can catch this disruptor that could be huge. He could go up the if ramp. he can. If he if he can catch both disruptors, there's I wanna say there's a chance here for Anton Dahlstrom. But it looks like he's just oh, gonna go for the fourth nice and, and yeah, that those are some some centers. I mean he's so far behind, but he really needs every bit that he can get, oh. but no. Puck links into the main, force fields the ramp. No charge. And that's gonna be lights out. No charge needed from Puck. 
He's gonna get two. You think uh, that's his uh, ace card? Yeah, maybe we'll see it against Solar if it ever gets there. If, if, He's if, saving it. He's yeah. saving it. The what? What Puck is not accounting for though is that Solar is going up against your Thermal. Yeah, that is true. So we'll see how that end, ends up working.